Hunter x Hunter's York New Arc is absolutely spectacular. While I do believe that the Chimera Ant Arc is deeper, more complex, and more profound in its symbolism and themes, I find the York New Arc to be just as enjoyable. This arc was incredibly important for Hunter x Hunter as a whole. It shifted the tone of the story to something much darker, sinister, and more mature. The entire York New scenario changed things for each of our protagonists, especially Kurapika. It was a story that the series had been building up to since what felt like the first few episodes. Tension slowly and slowly built in a steady crescendo through the series, until we reached the stunning apex that was the York New arc. I had enjoyed the series up until then, but it was during this arc where Hunter x Hunter established itself as a series that I adored. This arc finally captured the depth and maturity of character exploration and storytelling that the series had been hinting at but not achieved until that point. And this achievement was made possible thanks to one of my absolute favorite elements of Hunter x Hunter as a series, the Phantom Troop. The Phantom Troop, otherwise known as the Spider, is a group of 13 members, one leader, Krolo Lucilfer, the head of the spider, and 12 members, or legs, of the spider. This group was conceived by Krolo and originally only included Krolo himself, Feitan, Machi, Nobunaga, Pakunoda, Franklin, and Uvogin, until Krolo decided that the spider needed more legs. This band of thieves and murderers is absolutely one of Togashi's most impressive conceptions, and that is saying something. Thoughts on the Phantom Troop greatly differ depending on who you ask and what their moral standpoint is. I've heard everything about them, from claims that they're entirely sympathetic to views that they're irredeemable, and everything in between. The one thing that is for certain is that they are an absolute joy to watch, full of color and personality. Now, the Phantom Troop are so important because a lot of the York New Arc hinges on the Watcher caring about the stories of these individuals. Without being invested in this group, the narrative would fall flat because the entirety of the Arc is fixated on their exploits. However, there is an issue here. The Phantom Troop are entirely new characters to the series. There had been foreshadowing of them, but other than Machi's brief appearance, we had no notion of what they were like. Yet, the vast majority who have watched or read Hunter x Hunter agree that the York New Arc was a resounding success. So, how did Togashi craft the Phantom Troop in a way that allowed the audience to instantly become so intrigued by them? The answer is simple to grasp and difficult to execute. Through their absolutely brilliant characterization, Togashi made the Phantom Troop undeniably and unequivocally human. Despite being seemingly simple thieves and murderers, there is a lot of depth to the troop. The members devote their existences to something greater than themselves, something rooted in a profound camaraderie and purpose. The spider functions because of the nature of its legs, or members, and these legs thrive in the purpose they achieve through the troop's exploits. It's like a cyclical, self-fulfilling prophecy. The Phantom Troop originates in Meteor City, a city in which the inhabitants have no origin, no one to love, no identity. As such, the Spider takes these orphaned individuals and provides them with exactly what they need and crave. I believe that we as humans require an identity and a purpose in life in order to find meaning. The Spider is so poignant in a sense because it provides its members with a place of belonging. These people latched on to the only thing in their lives that provided them with freedom, expression, and joy. And what is more human than that? Through its leader and head, Krolo, the spider quite literally saved its members' lives. When you see things from this perspective, doesn't it make all of the killing and thieving for the good of the collective a bit more understandable? Maybe not for some, but it at least adds nuance and depth to the troop. And while they are self-aware that they are cogs in a machine, lesser parts of a bigger picture, the members of the Phantom Troop all have their own quirks, both visually and in characterization terms. Although there is undoubtedly more focus on certain members, this distinguishes each one and makes them more than just monotonous legs of a spider. All of these aspects make the Phantom Troop completely engaging. They're killers, but they're also human beings simply living their lives in the most fulfilling way they see fit. They feel. They have habits and personality quirks. They play cards and stuff their fingers in their ears when Uvogin does his thing. Togashi made the troop so much more than a standard antagonistic band, and this contributed greatly to the themes of ambiguous morality and justice that dominate the York New Arc. 
This aspect of the troop immediately drew me to the spider when I first started the York New Ark, and encouraged me to pay great attention to each of the individual members of the group. The spider that is least associated with and has the weakest emotional connection with the ideologies of the troop. Kaluto joins the troop after the York New Ark, replacing Hisoka, with the ultimate goal of becoming stronger and bringing Kilua home in mind. When first introduced, he is quiet, reserved, and obedient, though it should be noted that he is not against being a bit brutal with his killings. Kaluto nurses a bit of an inferiority complex. He is insecure and at times lacks confidence in himself, especially when comparing himself to his extraordinary family members and his fellow troop members. In this sense, his needs do fall in line with the other legs of the spider. He is a bit unsure of his place in the world. However, he is unlike the other troop members in that he seems to be using the troop as a means to an end, rather than finding peace and solace in the spider. Perhaps that will change in the future. Nevertheless, he adds an interesting element to the phantom troop going forward. Cortope is definitely one of the least emphasized members of the troop, despite his quite distinct character design. While he was very important in some of the activities of the spider during York New, and he is loved by his fellow members, the story very rarely focuses on his thoughts or actions. In fact, very little is known about Cortope in general. We do know that at the time of the York New Ark, he was the least powerful spider in terms of physical strength. So there is that, I suppose. His power to create replicas of virtually any physical object is very useful though, and he was in the center of one of the most shocking moments of the series in recent times. I did say spoiler alert. Bonolanov is another one of the spiders that are on the periphery in terms of significance, but we do know a bit more about him than we do about Cortope. He's a man that speaks quite eloquently and with pride of his heritage and roots. Before joining the spider, Bonolanov was a member of the Guo Guodondond, a tribe that was eventually driven out of existence by modern development and society. As such, he is the exact type of person that the troop was meant to contain, a lonely man searching for a home and people to care for. And Bonolanov found exactly that in the troop. He is quite well liked by the other troop members and evidently thought of as family. Franklin is a calming influence in the troop that embodies the ideologies of the spider as well as Krola himself. As a founding member, his loyalty to the spider is deeply rooted. While he is not opposed to settling things in combat with the other members, he deeply cares for them and seems to be one of the only ones who can settle disputes and altercations calmly and logically, with the needs of the spider clear in his mind. There is no one with a better understanding of exactly what the spider is, how it should function, and what it needs to survive than Franklin. Where other troop members may be pushed to prioritizing other things ahead of the spider's survival, such as the well-being of Krolo himself, Franklin has perhaps the best understanding of how Krolo wishes the Phantom Troop to function. He is always there to provide wisdom to his family, and while he may not have as much individuality in his personality as the other troop members, this is due to his role as mediator. He is essential to the functioning of the spider, and the guy has guns in his fingers, and that's just bad ass. Shizuku is an interesting one. She forgets people's names, forgets even meeting people, and has an overall ditzy demeanor. On one occasion, she forgot that she had arm wrestled Gon just days prior. Yeah, she's a bit of an airhead. Still, there's something endearing about this adorable murderer and her Nen-powered vacuum. She is a bit like the little sister or darling of the group, and I think that the members are very protective of her. Or rather, they would be if she needed protection. Not very much is given away about Shizuku's past, but it is assumed that she, like many of the others, originated in Meteor City. She replaced a troop member who was killed by Silva Zoldik three years prior to the York New Ark. I really enjoy Shizuku as a character. There's something really fun about having a whimsical, 
scatterbrained young woman to contrast and juxtapose some of the more stoic, cold, and calculated members of the troupe. Shalnark is actually one of the most interesting members in my opinion, and a classic example of looks being deceiving. Shalnark has a childish face and demeanor. He is hardly ever not shown smiling or laughing. He's lighthearted, and his power literally involves turning people into remote control toys. Beneath these actions, however, is an intelligent, unflinching, detached, and relatively unfeeling man. He wears a smile as he dishes out death and destruction, and he treats his victims like toys, and becomes disappointed when they die, or break, as he would then need to find a new one. Shalnark is much more of an analytical, logical thinker than an emotional or sentimental person. He forms connections with the other members of the troop, particularly with Uvogin and Phaetan, but he is never truly close to any of them, especially relative to some of the other bonds we see in the spider. Shalnark tends to be the one to try and take personal feelings out of the equation when settling disputes. Though he was concerned about Uvo's safety during his absence, he simply does not feel nearly as much as some of the other members like Nobunaga or Pakunoda. In fact, after Krola was kidnapped, Shalnark sided with Feitan and Finks in wanting to go after Pakunoda in order to kill the chain user, even at the risk of Krola's life, as the action would benefit the spider as a whole. This detachment is also perfectly illustrated in the aftermath of Pakunoda's death. While most of the troops spent the days after the death in mourning, Shalnark had already moved on and was entirely concerned with learning all that he could about Greed Island to help Krolo and restore the spider. His logical outlook and reasoning is an asset to the troop, and above all, he realizes his role as an insignificant cog in the machine better than nearly everyone else, as evidenced when he was not all that worried about his death being foretold, but concerned about Pakunoda and Shizuku, whose deaths would leave the troop in dire straits due to losing their valuable powers. In analyzing Shalnark as a person, it's pretty evident that he is likely the closest thing to what outsiders like Gon and Karapika assumed the members of the Phantom Troop would be like. But even despite his cold characterization, he has found a home in the troop and is fiercely loyal to his comrades. Shalnark did display some shock and grief after learning of Kortopi's fate during recent events in the manga, and quite interestingly, one of the few times where his cold and calculating persona was broken led to his demise. Pakunoda starts off as one of the least emphasized members of the troop, so it is a bit of a surprise that she ends up being the center of one of the most heartfelt moments of the arc. She exudes an air of confidence, and her power to extract memories led to some absolutely thrilling cat and mouse games between the troop and our protagonists, but Pakunoda is also much more than that. In my eyes, she is the quintessential example of why the troop was formed in the first place. Pakunoda's past is mostly unknown, but due to how purely she cares for the spider and the troop members, along with her love and gratitude to Krolo, I'd say that she was in desperate, desperate need for a home, and that she owes her life to the Phantom Troop. This is demonstrated through her desire to save Krolo despite his wishes for her to prioritize the spider above its head, and even more through the way that she sacrifices herself to inform her brothers and sisters of Karapika's power. If I were to make an inference here, I would guess that Pakunoda was never really treated with love or respect throughout her early life. She did end up in Meteor City, after all, and was yearning for a home and people to love, and she demonstrates this love for the people that made her life worthwhile through her actions in the York New Ark. Not only this, but Pakunoda greatly appreciates those who treat her and her loved ones with respect. Through her last memories and communicated via Finks, she professed her gratitude for Gon and Kilua and their desire to settle the dispute without any unnecessary death. Overall, Pakunoda ended up being one of the most interesting Phantom Troop members for me, and she contributed greatly to the feeling of love and family within the Spider which was quite effective in humanizing these antagonists. I really, really like Machi. She's basically the tsundere of the group, a character archetype that I've got to admit that I have an affinity to. For the vast majority of the time, 
she acts cold and emotionless, but she has a soft side for those that she cares about, meaning her fellow troop members. The way her behavior and true self contrast each other is actually the polar opposite of how Shalnark is characterized, which is pretty interesting. She deeply mourns Pakunoda's death and was willing to fight her own fellow members in order to save Krolo's life, something which you wouldn't associate with someone like her at first glance. She does believe in the importance of the spider, but she would put those she cares about ahead of the spider every time. Her scenes with Hisoka and the way she brushes his advances off throughout the series are great, and despite her harsh words and behavior, it is clear that a small part of her cares for him. Though, not enough to make her not want to kill him if he were to go after Krolo. Overall, Machi is just a kick-ass, take-no-crap, emotional character with a great design, and I think she's absolutely awesome. Thinks is a brash and impulsive character whose actions are dictated by a primitive want rather than any calculation. He is definitely a character who chooses heart and adrenaline over head, in contrast to members like Franklin or Shalnark. An interesting thing to note is that both Shalnark and Thinks wanted to kill Karapika despite Krolo's life being at stake, but while Shalnark was thinking logically and for the good of the spider, Thinks simply wanted revenge. He isn't the brightest, as demonstrated through his hilarious failed attempt at a bluff while negotiating with Karapika, and he lives to fight. His combat style also reflects his personality. Brutal, hand-to-hand, -hand, devastating. But he isn't just a mindless brute, and as I said previously, he wears his heart on his sleeve and cares very much for his brothers and sisters. He has formed a close bond with Feitan, and quickly gains an affinity with Kaluto. He lends his clothes to Shizuku after she lost them, and showed a moment of profound sadness when reflecting on Pakunoda's final moments, showing gratitude to Gon and Kilua for their role in her peace of mind. I wouldn't say that he's the classic harsh ruffian with a heart of gold, but he's definitely got some similarities with that type of character archetype, or rather, as many similarities as a brutal killer can have. Phaetan is one of the more popular Phantom Troop members, which is totally understandable when you take into account his badass persona, cool fighting style, and quirky dialogue. He's the strong and silent but slightly psychotic member of the troop, skilled in the art of torture and interrogation. He doesn't tend to say much, and when he does, he uses a pretty limited vocabulary or even his own fictional language when attempting to express himself. He's cold and tends to compete with members to see who can get more kills, but it should be noted that he's extremely close with his comrades, and seems to be especially fond of Thinks and Shalnar, who he's quite protective of. While Phaetan is incredibly sadistic and enjoys inflicting pain, he is also deeply invested in the spider, having been one of the original members. He's always involved with jobs and is able to recall exact details regarding the troops such as the exact number of days since the last meeting, when new members joined, and what jobs were carried out at what times. While the spider is undoubtedly an outlet for Phaetan to let loose and express himself through bloodshed and torture, he has also found a home, a place of solace, friends, and family in the troop. Nobunaga is probably the most approachable and friendly Phantom Troop member. Of course, this is all relative, and it should be noted that he is still a cold murderer, but he is more than capable of reason and actually appears to be quite friendly at times, as seen when he tries to befriend and recruit Gon and Kilua. I think of Nobunaga as a big contributor to the heart of the Phantom Troop, and without him, the spider wouldn't seem nearly as complex as it does. It is through Nobunaga where we witness the level of connection that these members can have with one another. His deep friendship and subsequent mourning of Uvogin brought an essence of moral ambiguity that tends to be absent from most antagonists in anime. It is much easier to hate a group that is cold and emotionless from top to bottom, and through Nobunaga, we see that this is not the case with the Phantom Troop, as Gon finds out and has trouble accepting. Nobunaga wasn't the character that introduced the distinct sense of family and loyalty within the troop, as we'll explore in just a second, but he was the one that maintained that theme and carried it strongly throughout the York New Arc. It's hard to believe that Uvogin's death was not meant by cheers from me, 
But this narrative was brilliant at making his death a death that was far from triumphant. Were Karapika's actions justified? You could argue ethics all day, but I think that they were at least understandable. Yet, seeing Uvogin die in the way he did just left a bitter taste in the mouth. And this is because he is the humanity and ideology of the Phantom Troop personified. Uvogin is a barbaric, bullying, bloodthirsty brute, and there is no denying that. But in his last moments, when he could have lived on, had he just revealed some secrets to Karapika, Uvogin was resolute in the stance that he would rather die than betray the spider. And this is a turning point, not just for Karapika or the York New Ark, but for Hunter x Hunter as a whole, as the element of ambiguous morality that is so deeply associated with Hunter x Hunter is first introduced. How could this evil group, capable of such despicable things, feel anything as human as loyalty and love for others? This frustrated Karapika and left him without a proper outlet for his rage, which toppled the first domino that led to his feeling of emptiness at the end of this arc. This made both Karapika and the audience question exactly what the Phantom Troop were. We tend to show our true selves in our final moments, and in his final moments, Uvogin showed loyalty and pure altruism to his family. Don't get me wrong, Uvogin was actually quite twisted and immoral through some of his actions and thoughts throughout the series. The way he simply brushed off and couldn't remember his slaughter of the Kurtas due to the sheer amount of bloodshed that he had spread was pretty deplorable. But there is a level of respect that I have for characters like Uvogin. Characters that simply live life how they please. I have a soft spot for characters that are instinctual, who know exactly who they are and what they want out of life. Ones who are bold enough to laugh the loudest and rage the hardest. I actually find quite a few parallels in terms of both characterization and character design between Uvogin and Ryder from Fate Zero. Live life to the fullest is a phrase that gets tossed around quite a lot. It's a philosophy that is much easier said than done. Living without hesitation, insecurities, and inhibitions is desperately difficult. Very few, myself included, can actually fully live that way. That's why I get a bit of an envious, vicarious thrill out of seeing characters like Uvogin. But the beautiful thing about him is that he is only enabled to live this freely due to the safe foundation of a home and the familial bonds he found in the troop, and he acknowledges this through his pure loyalty to them right until the end. The mourning that subsequently occurs after his death hammers home the fact that Uvogin was a man more than worthy of love. This whole thing is a concept that, while simple, gets more thought-provoking the more you think about it. Through Uvogin, we see exactly why the Phantom Troop is so much more than a simple antagonist band. As Gon angrily exclaims about how unfair it is for the troop to grieve for the death of one of their own after they caused so much pain, the message about this band of thieves is hammered home. Gon is right, it isn't fair. The Phantom Troop are hypocrites, individuals that apply backwards logic to justify living a life that simply makes them feel empowered and good about themselves, because nothing else does. But that statement can apply to so many people, not just in Hunter x Hunter, but in the world today. In the end, the Phantom Troop's motivations were not so different from some of Hunter x Hunter's protagonist characters. They just got dealt a difficult hand, and found a home for themselves through the only means possible. I found myself entranced with the Phantom Troop. The pure familial bonds between these brothers and sisters, the sheer entertainment factor they exude, and the poignant glimpses of humanity that we see from them despite the context of the narrative made them one of my favorite aspects of the show. The scene where Krolo sadly composes an orchestra of mourning and destruction as a tribute for Uvogin is one of my top three scenes of the series, and literally the moment where I said, I love Hunter x Hunter. The music, the dialogue, the voiceover of the fortune, the lighting, the atmosphere, the imagery, the sheer sentiment and concept of the Requiem, it was just jaw-droppingly beautiful. It's a scene that still gives me chills to this day, and one that solidified my love for the troop as antagonists. While I don't excuse the troop's horrible actions, I do find the motives and mechanisms behind those actions and the spider itself to be complex and fascinating. 
Hopefully you all enjoyed them as much as I did. Feel free to share what you like about the troop, who your favorite member is, or perhaps why you didn't enjoy them or the York New Ark. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more.